Good day everyone, welcome once again to our channel. In today's video, we'll be moving away from bottom supported rigs and move on to vessels that float. So we will be discussing today floating rigs and um, specifically the semi-submersible rig. We will not proceed without saying a huge thanks to everyone who has followed us on our channel, who has liked, who has subscribed, and who has commented and asked questions. That's actually the most important part because from your comments and questions, we will know what your hard desires are and continue to act accordingly. So moving right into the presentation, um, the outline is as follows. We'll be introducing the topic, talking about the merits and concerns of the semi-submersible rig, looking at the deck plan, looking at the rig move modes, talk about station keeping, give example, show examples, then talk about the um, rating and classification sample. That's pretty much look at the sample of what the rating of a, and the classification of a semi-submersible should look like. So this is what the semi-submersible looks like um, to the right. There are basically two types. We have the bottle type and the column type. Um, they pretty much have vertical cylinders or long, um, rectangular cubes um, that add columns and they pretty much um, have water we pretty much store water in them this water is used to ballast the rig those, those columns are directly connected to the deck and um, the columns are either round or square in cross section and um, the main deck can be found on top of these columns um, another another point to note is that these rigs are actually um, propelled by themselves so they are self-propelled they can actually get themselves to the location where they where they intend to drill or they can be dry towed just like the like the jackup rig um again for station keeping they can be moored or dynamically positioned we'll see we'll, we'll talk about those um we'll talk about these as we as we move ahead but one point to note is that they are very stable they are more stable than the drill ships so, um, for the, the advantages of the semi-submersible is that they are very good um, for station keeping. I just spoke about that. Um, in very bad weather, they are able to remain very steady in that environment. Um, they are anchored or dynam dynamically positioned. If you look here, we see that the depths that we have for anchored rigs are pretty much um, shallower than what we have for 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 dynam dynamically position this is because the cost and time it's all about optimization the cost and time you spend anchoring a rig at this depth it's going to be very cost ineffective so it will be smart at this point that if you're going to operate in water depth of up to ten thousand feet or perhaps from i'll say from two three thousand feet where you need a lot of mooring equipment it will be smart to have dynamically position uh, a dynamically positioned rig to come operate for you at this depth. Again, they are designed to work in very host very hostile or very bad weather, and um, they have very good survival characteristics. Part of the concerns are the sub they are subsea BOP system. It's very difficult to launch and also very difficult to retrieve and maintain. Um, watertight integrity is pretty much very low for obvious reasons and the mooring system integrity can not stand the test of a hurricane so imagine sitting in this environment and being on this um, vessel at this time it's something that i'm sure um nobody want to want to be part of at this time so this is what the deck plan looks like um to the to the left i have the main the deck plan that's the, the, on the top of the rig when you when you look at the rig from the top you have your heli deck somewhere here you have your pipe rack on the port side you have your starboard um your pipe rack on the starboard side and you have your cranes looking at it from the top you have um, areas where you store the riser the riser the conduit that you're going to be that's attached to the rig to the well um we're going to be discussing this as part of the rig as part of subsea drilling equipment as we proceed then on the main deck plan just under the deck 
on, on looking at the deck just under the deck you have the accommodation somewhere here directly under the heli deck so you can see your recreation room your cinema local room mess room and the, the hall of accommod the accommodation halls then you have your windlass on all sides of the rigs so about eight of them on this particular rig they had your you have your mom mud pumps you have your machine room it is it is so this is pretty much what the main deck plan looks like so um getting the rig to the location how do we get the rig to location so it's either we're told that is you have it is connected to vessels and it's been towed to location or it is carried on a barge on a tow barge and taking the location that's the dry tow station keeping for the semi submersible so because of the pitch way surge roll heave your you will have to either moor these rigs or use the dps to annul those movements um here to the left you can see how the rig is is moored to, uh, to the location and there are various ways which you can moor the rig so these are various ways they can be moored if you have nine lines and they can be moored symmetrically you have eight lines they can also be moored symmetrically you have 10 lines that can be moored symmetrically and you have eight lines that can be staggered 30 degrees 70 degrees you have eight lines that can be staggered 30 60 and you have um, eight lines or 10 lines that can be staggered 45 and 90. so these are various ways a rig can be moored to the right which is the dynamically positioned system is a closed loop system where the main point for me is the control system. So after the position and the heading reference of the rig is fed into the system, that goes into the control system, which ensures that we maintain that position. Now, that information is passed to the optimization trust allocation whenever there is a current force or wind force or wave force acting on the rig. That passes information to the terminal control system of, dynam of, the, of the dynamic system. So what we're trying to say is when there's a when there's a deviation on, on where the rig is supposed to be, the control system passes on that information that passes on the information to the trusters and the power system to activate the trusters and get it back to the position where it's supposed to be. So it's a, this control system just pretty much acts like the brain of of the of the dps that's of the dynamically positioned system so it takes that information sends it to the system that dynamically put that, dynam that, that dynamically controls these trusters and the power system and they act accordingly so you see it passes information to the power system and also passes information to the trusters so that way it helps to keep it in station if there's any wave or move moving it away it passes that information and helps to keep it on location so these are examples of what um semi submersibles look like we have the deep water nautilus to the left you have the chris chenary in the middle and we have the deep water horizon um it's not a good thing i know when we hear deep water horizon because for those of us that know about Macondo, that was the rig that that um that, that we lost in that um in that operation and i'm sure the current um the current picture of how that we have in our minds is this which is why we need to get ourselves to be very good engineers to continue to train to get ourselves very competent and to be very safety conscious so we're going to be having a lot of these lessons covering ensuring that we get ourselves technically competent and also having lessons in in safety to ensure that events like this never cross our path so what does um this is what the technical sheet of um, a semi-submersible looks like everything is um this is a summary everything is pretty much spelled out the air gap is about 30 meters another very important information are the dimensions you can see all that here the pontoon length 111 meters breadth 14.25 etc etc um the operating draft is about 23.5 and survival draft is about 21.5 most of the information here are, is um, are the marine information. In the detailed information, you will see lots of information about, but not just the marine information, but also on the operating um, 
information. So thank you very much, um, everyone. Thank you for listening to this video to the end. Once again, please do not forget to share. Do not forget to like, comment, and please subscribe. That's the only way you can know if we have new, video, new videos posted on the channel. Thank you once again for listening to the end. Bye for now.